Thing, ladies. Who's excited to get this event going? Make some noise, please. Oh, come on. We just we just had a really good dinner. You can do better, right? Let's do it again. Make some noise. That's more like it. So my name is Elisha. I am the founder of Tech Ladies, and today I'm so excited to be here to tell you more about what the Tech Ladies Bootcamp 5 uh, is going to be about and our first Tech Ladies Mentorship Program. So a lot of uh, things are going to happen today and I'm so excited to be here. So before we get the event started proper, I just want to do like show of hands, don't stretch your hands a little bit. Okay. So how many of you are here at your first Tech Ladies event? Oh, that's a lot. How many of you has actually been to a Tech Ladies event before this? All right. Yeah, like people in the first row are actually the volunteers, so kind of, yeah, by default. Cool. Okay, cool, cool. So how many of you are currently in the tech industry? Oh, so maybe at 25%. And the rest, uh, how many of you are new? How many of you are not currently in the tech industry and want to join the tech industry? And and the rest of you are here for free food? <laughs> <laughs> That's the tech recruiter counts as tech. <laughs> uh, yeah, tech recruiter is kind of in the tech industry. Not bad, not bad. All right. OK, so last question. How many of you are interested in joining the Tech Ladies Boot Camp? Oh. So like, you want to join the boot camp, but not join the industry. <laughs> Seems like. Uh, Okay, okay. And how many of you are interested in the Tech Ladies Mentorship Program? It's good. Even before knowing the details, you're interested in the program. That's, that's really good. I like that. Keep the energy high. How do I go next? Oh, just that. Okay. So I'm going to quickly bring you through the plans for today. We are about like 15 minutes behind, but by and large, we're going to start with talking about what Tech Ladies is about, and uh, then we'll jump straight into what is the Tech Ladies Bootcamp 5, what are the NGOs involved, and what is Tech Ladies Mentorship Program all about. So the, we should wrap up at about 9.30, and uh, that's it. That's where everyone can go home and enjoy your Thursday. So, I want to give like a, a huge, huge, huge shout out to Microsoft who has so graciously uh, sponsored this lovely venue for us. So please give Microsoft a round of applause. <laughs> and I'd like to have Sarah, our host, to give a short shout out. Cool. Um, thanks, Alicia. So, this is really rare. My, my name is Sarah. Nice to meet you guys. I'm from the developer relations team. So, we actually do host a lot of meetups at night. And I can really tell you from experience, this is a very welcome presence. Normally we see two to three ladies in a room full like that. So this is great. Um, and also we're actually moving office soon, so this is a really good way to close our office with an event like that. Um, just, yeah, so thanks so much for coming. Um, very good to see ladies learning STEM. Um, it's, we have a lot of women in tech, so myself, I don't know that much coding yet, and I hope to pick it up. So yeah, all the best to you guys. Enjoy the night. Thank you so much, Sarah. And I think you touched on a really good point um, that we typically see like a, a reverse ratio in terms of men and women. But having said that, I also want to take time to give a shout out to our male allies. A lot of them who are actually coaches here. I know there's one from Penang and all the way at the back, our male allies from Pakistan. Woo! 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 Yeah, so these are the community leaders that I have the pleasure to work with and they're amazing, amazing people. Okay, so I want to start with an introduction on what Tech Ladies is. So we are a community-led initiative to help women learn and connect and grow in the tech industry. Now, what does community-led initiative mean? It means that we're not a real thing. We're not a we're not a not for profit. We're not a private limiter. We're just a group of people with the same vision and passion to see more women enter the tech industry, and that's why all of us are volunteers with our day job. We take on more, uh, set aside more time to be able to see more women, people like us, join the industry. 
So at Tech Ladies, what we believe in is want to be, we want to increase women's participation in the industry. We want to see more women in meetups. We want to see more women speaking at conferences. We want to see more women in our workplace. And again, even though we want more women, doesn't mean that we are anti-men. Yeah, we still welcome uh, the presence and the contribution of our male allies because gender diversity in tech is not a woman's problem, it's an industry problem. And it requires all of us to chip in and contribute to make our industry a more diverse one. So right now, just a quick show, uh, quick uh, sharing in terms of where we are. We are currently over 3,000 members in Asia. We have two physical chapters, one in Singapore, well obviously, and, uh, <laughs> and also one in uh, Penang. Yeah, actually this, this photo is in Microsoft. <laughs> yeah, and uh, before they renovated the place, it's amazing. And in terms of workshops and boot camps, we have trained over 500 women, of which we're very happy that 12 of them are now software engineer, uh, junior role, or interns. Isn't it cool like when a group of volunteers come together and contribute, we see we can really change people's life? That gets me going, you know, that makes me excited about, about tech ladies. And uh, these are the people who are contributing to tech ladies. This is the team. Um, I'm Elisha all the way there, I'm the founder. Su Wing is our Penang chapter lead, so she's, she's not here with us today. Dilis is the event coordinator. She also runs the Tech Ladies Meet event series. Janine is right here, which you'll hear a lot more about Tech Ladies from her later on. Lian, uh, she might be outside helping out because she's a volunteer, but she runs the study group, which I think some of you have already met her through that. And Vasu is also, oh, you actually met her downstairs. So they are helping out with the registration downstairs. So Vasu is uh, leading on the mentorship program. Okay. So I want to quickly show you about how we at Tech Ladies think about the things we want to do to increase women's participation in the tech industry. It's going to be very colorful, so be prepared. Boom. <laughs> okay. So when we think about women joining the tech industry, we want to be able to help women at all stages of their journey in terms of entering the tech industry. So it's not just about, so we start with you know, people who are exploring, this is the industry, is for them. And for that, we have two programs, the study group that I talked earlier. This is a monthly uh, study group. I'll, I'll share a bit more afterwards. And we also have the networking event. So for a woman who knows that, yeah, this is technology is what I want to pursue. I want to, be, I want to be able to invest more of my time to learn more about technology, then that's where the bootcamp comes in. And afterwards, if you are looking for, you know, really ready to join the industry, that's where the mentorship program will come in to help you, to give you the soft skills and guidance and the network for you to be able to break into the industry. So this is how we think about um, what we want to offer tech ladies. Again, we are all volunteers. So definitely look forward to having some of you to lead some of these initiatives as well. Everybody have a part to play. Okay, so I'm going to quickly talk about what the study group is. So the study group is basically, oh, I think maybe oh, no one is here. Yeah, this is our familiar faces. So it's basically us crashing Starbucks or another, or another cafe to learn, to learn resources that are available online together. So this is what it provides is a, is a support network where people, where you can actually ask questions with your peers if you have any, and also just learn together, be on the same journey uh, with each other. So this year, there is a theme to our study group. So we it's going to be full stack for the full year. So we start off with the front end early in March, I believe, and we're slowly moving backwards. So I think the next one will come in about August or September on Python. So do watch out for that. The next event type we run is the Tech Ladies Meet. So you can actually see, um, Min is here today. So the Tech Ladies Meet is a uh, very casual roundtable discussion that we have uh, where, where groups of women will come together 
and then ask questions to industry practitioners. So these are again, it could be about front end developer. How do you, what does a front end developer do? How much are you paid? What's the industry like as a woman? These are the questions that you can ask someone who is living that life and get real answers. And the last thing, thing is the tech ladies bootcamp. So this is what yeah, you're also here for. So this is actually the photo of our first tech ladies uh, bootcamp graduates. So this lady here, she, she is a gymnastic teacher. That's why you see that she's super flexible. And now she's actually a, a known influencer uh, in the tech world. And she re recently, actually just yesterday, she did a talk at a Facebook event in front of 300 people to share about her journey. It's just really amazing to see how, again, when people come together, amazing things can happen. So speaking of Tech Ladies Bootcamp, I'm now going to pass on to Janine, who will share more about the bootcamp and upcoming bootcamp, Tech Ladies 5. Janine, please. So we have, you, you see me plugging the microphone because we are filming this so that everyone who is not here can also understand what are different programs for them. And while he's doing that, shout out to Michael Chen. He is not the AV guy. <laughs> he actually runs the junior dev uh, meetup group. He also does the uh, gig branch. So he is a real, uh, he's an awesome male ally. He's top two boot camps itself, and this time is also contributing for the Tech Ladies Boot Camp. So please give my turn. <laughs> okay, thanks, Elisha, and thanks everyone for joining us today. All right, so. Um, just briefly, yes, I'm Janine. I'm the co-organizer for this year's bootcamp, right? So, um, okay, I, okay, I myself, I'm actually accounting trained. Okay, so I work in a social enterprise to build a uh, capacity of non-profits and social enterprises. Okay, and today I'm actually pretty excited, a bit nervous actually. Okay, <laughs> to share more about uh, bootcamp five. Okay, so to put it simply, bootcamp five is a thirteen-week part-time accelerated learning program designed for women. So it can be women like yourself who wish to be professional programmers. Um, you can be like between 25 to 35, just a fresh grad or mid-career switches or returning moms to work. Right? And you're interested in software-related jobs and internships. So in general, bootcamp participants will form teams. So this year we'll have two teams and you'll be guided by industry experts aka our coaches, right, whom we'll introduce later. Right? And you build a web solution for the non-profits. And we're partnering with two this year, whom we'll introduce later. So historically, we have ran, successfully ran four iterations in the past four years for boot camps. This will be the fifth year, that's hence boot camp five. Right? And we have, in total, we have trained uh, 36 women. And 12 of the ladies have gotten uh, technical internships or be, have been hired as junior software engineers. And this is some of the portfolio. Um, some of the products were built for uh, some of the non-profits. So for example, um, for HCSA community services, we've uh, built for them a donor management system. Right? Um, for home, which is uh, advocacy for migrant workers, we've built a case management system. And for schools related like Mountbatten Vocational School or Touch Young Arrows, we have built uh, student management systems. <laughs> Alright, yep. So I mentioned that yeah, there'll be two teams. So each of the team will have three participants. So yeah, three times two means six participants, right? Who will work on um, a donor management system uh, for the two non profits, right? Uh, now, why a donor management system? I'm pretty sure you are familiar with uh, the word donor or donations, right? Yep. So donations are one of the main income for non-profits, right? And it's quite important to stay organized in terms of managing your list of donors, donations. Not only in terms of compliance, like to IRAs, but also um, it will help like strategically, like what sort of fundraising events to do how to raise the donations, and more importantly, um, to maintain and grow uh, the relationship with the donors. Okay, so now I would like to introduce uh, the two non-profits. Okay, I'll first like to introduce uh, yeah, the first non-profit, which is Denise. Okay, 
So the needs is uh, the community engagement lead from Rich Community Services Society. All right. So briefly, yeah, she aspires to be the bridging gap in helping others to support their causes meaningfully. So before joining the non-profit sector, she was a seasoned manager in both international uh, newspapers and magazines, including Forbes, with over 10 years of local and regional experiences. So please help me welcome Denise. So do I, where yeah, do I? So, yeah, you just click it and it goes somewhere around here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Hello everybody, hi I'm Denise and I'm really excited today to come and share with you what does REACH Community Services does. Honestly, I'm quite overwhelmed by the participants, I wasn't warned about the size of the crowd. <laughs> Frankly, I, I was so busy today, I mean I don't even really have gone through the slides. So Janine was just telling me, say, oh it's only 5 minutes, I said okay I tried. <laughs> so anyway, um, just, just to cut the chase, um, just let me um, quickly introduce to you what's Rich Community Services and what we do. Okay, um, just a little bit of background. I just joined the social service sector about three years ago. I sort of like a mid career switch in a way. I, I stay home for a couple of years just to look after my my little girl, and decided, hey, I think it's time. And I think I done that, did that. I want to sort of really give back to the community. So I think I'm part of like what you guys are trying to do as well, and the volunteering initiative as well. So, um, so I decided to take the plunge and the opportunity was open and I thought, wow, there's actually so much to be done in the sector. So let me come to you. Yeah. Okay, um, what's REACH Community Services? Actually, we were founded in 1980, uh, 1998 and we are registered charitable organization. We are founded by a church and uh, we became a member of the NCSS and then later on we got the IPC status. Um, why IPC? Meaning we can issue tax deduction and means that we have gone through rigorous governance and all so that donors are aware that the money are put into good use okay and then of course these are the partnering agency that we work with so we have been around for 21 years now yeah so our vision is touching hearts reaching lives and here's the mission so basically we stand for reclaiming hope enhancing social emotional well-being assisting personal growth caring for the hurting and helping the needy Okay, so I think this is what most people like to know is like, who do we really serve? So on the ground, we actually really look out for the low-income, needy and vulnerable individual and families and then the underprivileged children and at-risk youth, um, couples that lost trust in marriages and stuck in fractured family relationship. And of, of late with the aging population, we're also seeing a lot more poor, socially isolated, helpless seniors and their caregivers. And of course, now what's trending is actually mental health issues and we're really receiving a lot more um, cases that come through our door experiencing anxiety and depressive disorder and not I mean an alarming rate is actually the trends getting younger there are more and more young people coming through the door saying that I'm done with my life that kind of stuff okay so um, okay I'm just really going to quickly go through this um, so the strategic trust, basically we want to strengthen vulnerable families and individuals to help them to achieve independence, stability and resilience. And of course for the youth, we hope to uh, navigate them towards positive self-image and realizing their potential. So um, we also believe in building enduring marriages for couples so that they can nurture better for the next generation. And of course for the seniors, we are really practicing in terms of getting them to be active um, aging and also a proper support system for the caregivers because right now we are not really looking at just the low income seniors but generally seniors as a community as well 
So basically, just quickly run through, we have six community touch points and we break into this uh, main four pillars, which is the family, the counselling, the youth service and the senior service. So these are a little bit thing of some of the stuff that we do, the programmes that we run in each of the services. So these are the numbers we have, have um, reached out to last year. So um, as you can see, the, the big numbers was the counselling and the youth. And actually these two pillars are our non-funded programmes. Ma mainly we don't receive any government funding for these two, these two services that we run. Basically we rely very heavily on donation corporate sponsorship as well. So um, yeah, but senior part is, in the past we used not to have a money from the government as well, but of late they are putting in more money and championing because they know the aging population is where their needs are really emerging. So overall, last year we have um, we have uh, we have reached out to we have touched actually we have basically these are individual uh, lives that came through our doors and how we have helped them. So it's about over three thousand lives, and we also depend on volunteers to help us to run some of programs to help us raise funds. Um, yeah. So now probably I'll just go through a bit of the problems that um, why we need tech ladies to help us. Because um, like, like myself, in my role, I run, I, I, I look after the, the fundraising. I have to raise about 1.5 million to 2 million a year. And um, we have 60 staff. And our annual turnover is about 6 million. So we are considered a mid-size. But you can see, based on 60 staff, pretty under-resourced, right? So I not only take af look after the fundraising, I look after corporate communication and many other things. <laughs> so, um, so honestly, um, donor mention system is something that we have always wanted to look into it but we just don't have the resources or rather the money to plunge into getting a system and even getting a system I don't have the resources to even manage the system so it's, 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 it's always been like ah oh, yeah these are the things that we want to do but we never really get to do it so when tech ladies also contact us said, oh perfect timing and of course it's free <laughs> so we will grab anything that it's free some, I mean we are very prudent because we want to be very responsible for donation that comes through. So we are always very cost, uh, we are very cautious about how we spend our money as well. So um, okay, currently, problem face is really we, we even lack a very basic donor system. You know, we don't even have one. We basically just uh, Excel worksheet, and and we got a lot of entries like anonymous, anonymous, anonymous. <laughs> so it's like who are they? So um, yeah, so basically I'm facing a problem because we really lack of the resources. Now of course right now we really do a very simple method so was to extract our donors record from the IPC which links to IRAS. Basically if you give us, okay, let's say you donate to REACH and you say you want a tax deduction. So um, we enter your NRIC number or your organization UN number, it goes to IRAS and then you get the 250% tax deductible of your taxable income. Uh, so please donate, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so basically what we do with I, IPC actually provide a very simple system You can just enter the, the period that you want to extract Whoever has given, donated to you To the organisation And we can pull up And the string of uh, a lot of different numbers that just come out So you just make sense of it And we just have to um, And it's very simple Because for, for IRAS to issue tax deduction I just need your NRIC Or your UEN number I don't have your name, I don't even have your gender, I don't even have anything else. So it's kind of hard for us to understand who are our donors. And today I just actually, with my teammate, we just completed uh, looking at the past three years. Sadly to say, we are actually experiencing a decline in terms of the donors, number of donors. Means unique individual donors as well as general donations. So it only tells me that we are not doing enough to engage these donors. Because people just say, oh, I give you, do you even say thank you? Okay, I give you a receipt and that's it, but I don't know who you are. So I kind of feel that it's something that is, is quite timely that we need to resolve this. So basically, we really lack of basic information. We don't even know. I mean, sometimes even donor, they say, oh, it's my retiree. They say, decided that. Okay, I think I have this money I want to donate. But I, since I'm not working, I give my tax deduct deduction to my son or to someone else. And they just give that person's NRIC number and that's it. So actually, this person that received the text will only reflect an IPC, so I don't know who is my donor. 
you realize that I mean so you can see how complex and, and, and difficult that we are facing so we end up realizing having very limited engagement and nurturing relationship with donors and over time I'm sure people will start dropping off because you you never really bother to engage them yeah <laughs> So currently our goals are, as of now, we have about unique donors, about 600 right now and the pool is really reducing in size and everybody is really, the pie of donations, everybody is just really, really vying for it. So um, our objective is really to increase um, uh, the current base of our unique donors as well as to establish a user-friendly database with very intentional fields like knowing if I can pull out this person the history of giving, how is he, is there a, a specific pet cause he, he likes, like for example he may be very into senior, it could be youth at risk and all that kind of thing, to understand a little bit more about what they liked and of course um, knowing how they come to know about reach and of course um, even birthday I thought was very important because I thought there's something that I could at least say happy birthday to my donor, right? So. Um, so and of course the system we hope that it enables us to do some donor tracking reports so that we know and be I mean numbers can't fit and I think uh, with a donor tracking report we can realize how far we are from hitting our fundraising goals and how are we going to engage each of them uh, intentionally so um, with the system that's what I hope to achieve and as well as um, to, to establish some kind of automated system like you know maybe churning out some appeal letter and they can just send it to them or maybe we have some stories that came out from the ground we want to just tell donors that hey these are the good work that you know thank you for donation you know this is the story that came out from the ground and we want to share it with you um, kind of thing yeah yeah right so thank you <laughs> you got any let me ask question okay. <laughs> okay. <coughs> any questions you want to ask Noah? Okay. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you, Denise. Yeah. Yeah, I hope you have uh, yeah, learned more about uh, reach uh, social costs and uh, interested to help out um, to build that donor management system. And um, possible, right, coaches? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, I would, like, I would like to introduce the next uh, non-profit, which is actually a uh, Singapore Community of uh, UN Women. I'm actually honoured to uh, welcome the President of the UN Women, uh, Georgette. Um, <laughs> the just arrived here. Yeah. Okay. Right, so, yeah, very briefly, um, yeah, Georgette uh, serves, also serves in the Executive Council since 2012. So in this role, she focuses on advancing gender equality, women's empowerment, and anti-violence against women. Okay. So she was previously senior vice president of communications in Mastercard, responsible for external and internal communications, and also social responsibility throughout the Asian Pacific region. Yeah, please help me welcome you. Is that okay? Hi, good evening everybody. Can you all hear me? Yes. Great. Okay, well, thank you very much for the invitation to be here. And it's wonderful to see so many tech ladies in the audience and tech guys. <laughs> we have a handful of tech guys. Can I suggest that we give a big round of applause for the tech guys? <laughs> the gentlemen who are in the audience are, in fact, the enlightened ones. <laughs> Guys, take the cue from there, okay? So, they are the enlightened ones. The fact that they're here, that means they support, they believe. And we need more men like that behind us, next to us, leading the way, clearing the path for us. All right? So, thank you gentlemen for being here, and thank you ladies for giving up a nice, um, what, Thursday evening? Okay, all right. Um, all right, so I'm actually here um, with the Singapore Committee for UN Women. 
Have any of you come across our organization familiar with our logo, our work? Oh, a few hands, okay. This side of the room, winning on that front, that side not so much, okay. Um, well, shame on us if, if we haven't done a good enough job to, to tell you a little bit about what we do. Um, but uh, thank you for the introduction just now. Um, so I head up the team at uh, UN Women. Um, I came from private sector. Uh, I, in fact, I've just retired. I retired at the end of last year, um, specifically because there is just so much to do in this space. Gender equality, women's empowerment, providing a voice, uh, speaking up for women and clearing the path so that women uh, from all walks of life ha have a pathway to prosperity. That's really our goal, okay? So I decided after many, many, many moons of uh, you know, working in both government um, and private sector, it was time for me to devote my time to UN Women. Now, um, first I should give you a little bit, a thumbnail um, description of what UN Women is. It is a national committee. So under the UN, they have different categories of officers. Um, so they have their headquarters, which is at the UN itself in, in New York. They have uh, country offices, they have field offices and program offices. So in places like um, the Philippines, in Thailand, in, in, um, in Bangladesh, where they do a lot of outreach work, right? Then they have another category of offices or representative offices, like what we have in Singapore. Together with places like Japan, Australia, New Zealand, the UK, Germany, France, um, uh, Sweden, all developed markets, right? And our role in these developed markets is primarily twofold. One, fundraising, and the second one is advocacy, okay? So fundraising, fundraising because the, and I should clarify that we are completely self-funded. We take no money from the UN, and we take no money from the Singapore government either. All right, so we're completely self-funded. In fact, what it is is that we fundraise for, to send money, to remit money offshore to UN so that it can help fund some of their projects overseas. So what we actually like to do is we stipulate which projects we'd like to contribute to. Our donors, our, our supporters like to know that their <laughs> donations are going to very specific causes close to home, close to our parish here, all right? Uh, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with you know, helping, um, you know, war uh, strife areas. There's nothing wrong with helping, you know, areas of, um, after they've experienced natural disasters, the women are the, the worst impacted. So they need the most help. But for the most part, the work that we do, the fundraising that we do goes to support programs in this part of the world. So, for example, last year, a lot of our fundraising efforts went to help the women in Cox's Bazaar. Do you know where that is? Bangladesh. And you might know, it is, maybe you don't know the name of Cox's Bazaar. It, what you know is, it is the world's largest refugee center. There are close to one million refugees, many of whom are from Myanmar, the Rohingya who have crossed over and had a traumatic experience trying to get to safety. The women have seen and experienced atrocities. The children have been subject to the most horrendous things. So UN Women has devoted a team in Bangladesh to help build what they called women uh, multi-purpose women's centers, which uh, they are, they're, they're building several of these. The idea is during the day, women can go to these centers to seek counseling, to seek medical help, to learn a craft, to get to know the community, and to just get over the trauma that they've experienced. 
Right? So we have, we, we've actually been um, donating for the last year and this year also to this very, very, uh, very noble cause. So um, we've also been contributing to, pl to places like Cambodia, the Philippines, um, uh, Indonesia, many of which are UN women-specific projects that deal with safety for women, safety and security. So how do they make cities safer for women? Right? Um, uh, and, and, and how do they actually use technology to do so? But they also, it's about life skills, it's about empowerment. So our work very much encompasses the, the space of anti-violence, right? sexual harassment, economic empowerment, and the third pillar is that of governance and leadership. Right? But as a national committee, our role is primarily fundraising and advocacy. That said, and I pause here, only because we, we see ourselves, we have been a little bit of a hybrid here in the Singapore committee. Not only have we been doing um, the advocacy and the fundraising work, we've also done some community outreach. And I think this is something that might be extremely relevant and, and hopefully of interest to yourselves. We run a program that reaches out to girls in schools here in Singapore and it's called Girls to Pioneers. It's basically a STEM program. The research has shown, and, we've, and, and I did this research at MasterCard for over four years, that girls between 10 and 14 and 15 don't have a good impression of themselves in the STEM space. They actually believe that their, the boys, their male counterparts in schools are better at it, are smarter, who can, and they can succeed better. Okay? They are also the, under the impression that STEM is boring, STEM is not creative. Now, this is the one that actually really got to me, not creative. Okay? And we have an opportunity, the sweet spot of getting to these girls is around 13 and 14. And the idea is to do it in school because family first and foremost, are the main role models, followed by the external meanings, teachers, um, aunts, uncles, media, influencers, as they grow older. All right? So we run, we've run now for f over five years a program called Girls to Pioneers, where we reach out to the schools, run camps with them, fun camps, teaching them things like cryptography and algorithms. But applications, how are these used, right? Building a sand filter, fun stuff. So by that, the end of the a three hour, half a day camp, the girls go away saying, this is really fun. I'm really smart. I can do this. And guess what? I want to be a data scientist later on. I want to be, I want to be a researcher. I want to go into, um, you know, <laughs> physics. So, so it's about changing perceptions. We're also extending that, not only to the girls in the local schools, we're now reaching out to the international schools. We've done some work to reach out to the madrashas because that's another area where the girls, the teachers are very, very keen to have us engage with them. And these girls are super bright, but because they have this extensive curriculum of MOE, academics, plus religious studies. It's a long, long day. So they, it's hard for them. They don't have a lot of time for these external um, activities. So if we bring it to them, and we've done one or two of them with them, they love it. And they're so bright. They catch on and you could see the eyes just light up when they, when they get it. So it's very, very encouraging. And the fourth area that we're starting to go into, the fourth target group, is that of homeschooled girls. And you're probably thinking, how many of them in Singapore, right? A growing number. We know of at somewhere between 60 or 70 girls alone who are homeschooled. There's a tight community and it is growing. Right? And them, they and their parents are very keen that the girls have some social interaction. And this program allows them to do so. So many of them have actually been undergoing our program. Many of them are now asking, what's next? 
it's all fine and good that you run a half a day program, but don't stop there. What's next? So we're very keen to extend our program. In extension here, we're talking about visits to corporates. We're taking from, you know, these, by the way, these camps are anywhere from 80 girls to 500 girls. All right, so that's pretty large. Um, it's like army logistics trying to work through it. Um, but, but then we take a smaller group as they grow a little older, we break them up into smaller groups and we take them out to visit corporates. To, do, to, to, to have a little bit of fun at their R&D centers, their design hubs, their innovation centers, right? And have them listen to women technologists, engineers, heads of research about what their work is, the challenges, but also what the rewards are, right? And we want them to look at these women as role models. So you, you remember I said earlier on about the research, looking for role models. We want these women to be the role models, right? So we're going to expand that even more. So phase three, that was phase two. Phase three, we're looking at mentorship, right? Where we will, we will look at some high potential girls, select them up, do a pilot program of a couple of schools and a couple of corporates, where we will match one-on-one -on -one women in these organizations with some of these girls, age about 15, 16, 17, to help guide them and say, okay, what do you want to learn? You know, um, are you doing the right things? Expose them, bring them to events, expose them to write, write readings, lectures, things like that. So there's lots of work to be done. And we're hoping that this mentorship program extends to internships. That's the natural extension, all right? Because the girls need, obviously, the opportunity. So we've got lots and lots of things going on. We're looking to have volunteers. We're looking, obviously, to get support from yourselves. You're the prime audience here for this, coming from the space yourself. But in addition to that, and that's why we're here today, anything that Denise has said, I second. We need that too. Whatever you're building for Denise, can I tong pang, please? <laughs> Please, okay? Because I think we all face the same issues, all right? We want to be able to track better. It's about governance, it's about tracking, it's about transparency. It's about tightening our processes up. Not just because the government requires us to do so. Char the Commissioner of Charities has already indicated that they want to see a tightening up of all the internal operational processes. We have to stay ahead of that, all right? We have to. Denise, I, I, I'm sure you agree, right? And, and part of it is, this, is, is the CRM program, is being able to track where the donations are coming from, who's giving it to us, so that we can better target and match accordingly. We can do better reports to be able to then feed it back to our sponsors and our donors and our supporters but not just from a donor perspective. We look at donors, and, 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 and Denise, you might do the same, not just in contributions of donations of cash, but of time, right? The volunteers. So the same system, we would love to be able to have this in parallel, track, monitor, and provide insights for our volunteer management program too. So if there is a solution out there with you ladies and gentlemen, I think we would be so grateful for that. Um, we're in dire need, obviously, uh, but um, you know, and, and the work, we, we, we believe in the work that we do, and we hope that you'll come along for that journey too. I'm here for the rest of the evening. Feel free to ask questions. Happy to, to take any questions. Thank you. Thanks very much. I hope that was okay. Thank you so much, Georgette. Yeah, I hope everyone is inspired. Uh, by the way, that one is not so fun. Yeah, yeah. It's not customized a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to customize it. It's still a donor management system, but still customized. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, Janine is um, clipping. I shall tell you. Oh, Joe. <laughs> 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 Just kidding. I don't have anything to wear. I think any questions? If I still save me. <laughs> 
All right, we're just making sure that we have... Um, I, I thought we were making the rich pun. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were making the pun. Oh. Okay, now, how many of you are huh? hello, hello, uh, even more interested in... Hello? Yeah, Oh, yeah. So the minimum age is 45. No, so like the type of program, again, because we are not a real thing, so we can do whatever we want. So that's why we don't have a hard age limit, but it's more on like we want to help people who are unable. And then mine, I just hold. Otherwise, we want to have a type of support that we can do like. Mm. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, save me. <laughs> I thought she was going to make the pun joke. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm just going to tell the pun. Sorry to do that. So, like, um, have the NGO reached? Yeah, I'm going to watch. Okay, anyway, yeah, let's continue. So, yes, we need to build, um, we need to help the NGOs build the donor management system, but how is it possible? Okay, so now I would like to introduce the team, the village, who's going to help you all, alright? <laughs> Alright, so first up, um, I'm going to, okay, I, I think you already know me and Elijah already, so we are the bootcamp organizers. I'm going to start from right to left. So I'd like to introduce our tech lead, Michael. Alright. Woo, Michael! Woo! Would you like to do a quick intro? Uh, hi. Got of PHP. Uh, yeah, um, my name is Michael. I'm, I've been in software for about 10 plus years. Um, in, in, in various capacities, both as an individual contributor uh, in small companies as well as medium-sized companies, as a consultant in Pivotal Labs, uh, tech, uh, you know, helping clients build applications and in Agile way, and uh, uh, and right, even right now as a tech <coughs> uh, in my in uh, in the company I'm working in, it's uh, basically it's Gov Tech. Uh, you guys of like parking the SG, yeah, it's kind of like the the camp. Yeah, um, we built that. So uh, not me personally, but you know, but uh, the, the team around us. No, no, not me, not me. So yeah, um, yeah, but basically we, um, 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 yeah, we do our best to help. Uh, I mean, I've been, I've been a coach in, in the technology bootcamp for quite a few times, and uh, I hope to also help the next batch of ladies who are going through this to uh, uh, do your best and to help uh, deliver a great product for the NGOs that we're helping. Uh, I hope to help the coaches in, in, in delivering this uh, effectively and also make it sustainable such that you know even after the boot camp uh, you the experiences you learn from here will also help you in uh, your your future career in tech or in when you collaborate with other te other techies around you um, that's all I have thank you mm. all right thank you all right now I'd like to introduce the coaches um, I'm gonna go to the nearest one first, which is Sheldon. <laughs> yeah, just a brief intro. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just say your name. Yeah. 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 So I've been, I've been working for about seven years since I graduated. Uh, actually, the tech stuff I mostly self learned. Yeah, I don't have complex degree, so... Yeah, uh, and I've been working in agencies, local startups, and currently at NQC Link. Yes, and I hope to be able to go some people here. Okay, the next one. Uh, okay, I need to chop, chop a bit. Uh. Okay, so uh, name what you work as, specialization. Okay? Vina. <laughs> 
Um, hi, I'm Reena. Um, I've been in the industry for a while. I started off as a developer, but now I'm an engineering manager at Schneider Electric. So I manage a lot of applications across uh, Asia Pacific and uh, Middle East Africa. So I'm, I'm very passionate about uh, STEM and engineering, especially for women. Um, so this is my first engagement with Tech Ladies. And I'm very happy to be one of the coaches here, uh, hoping to work with some of you and develop a, a kick-ass uh, donor management system for the NGOs. Thank you. Great. Hello, I am Lara Ashley. I am a developer by day and a trainer by night. So I started my own, my own company about two years ago, uh, doing software development. And uh, currently I'm also a trainer in some of the institutes in Singapore. So I hope to meet all of you in uh, the book camp. Thank you. Uh, the other two are Brian and Shane. Uh, okay, moving on. Okay, moving on, yes, okay, moving on. Okay, yeah, so, the, okay, so let's move on to, okay, the product list. The product list will be helping us uh, to scope um, the product features and work closely with the two non-profits. Okay, uh, Sneha here. Hi, uh, I am Sneha. I have been working in the car industry for about seven years now. Um, mainly financial services, been a little bit of consulting as well, um, and now partly working in SPS as a product manager. I'm looking forward to an exciting journey with all of you. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Amy here. So I did my computer science degree uh, about a few years back in Q and UC Berkeley. So right now I'm working as API product manager in Tata Communications. So I think this is a wonderful opportunity. I really, it, I'm jealous of you because I don't have this opportunity before when I was young. So I hope everyone grab this opportunity and just get up know with us. Thank you. Um, the other one would be Wait, Wait, Okay. Okay. Uh, hi, my name is Wayman, so I'm the UI UX designer. Um, I volunteer with uh, TechLadies for a while now, and uh, I was Thanks also right, part of up. the team okay. that designed the HCSA uh, um, donor app. So one thing I want to say is uh, it, it's really very so individual. Uh, so you don't say even though it sounds like you both want the same yeah. thing, we will customize one product okay. for you based on what your priorities are, because you all might have different ones. Um, I'm currently a UX designer at Pivotal, but actually I spent the first six years of my life as an illustrator in the games industry. So if I can make a career switch, you can make a career switch too. So I've been a UX designer for three years and I'm loving the job in the tech industry so far. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, uh, sorry, I need to cut short the introduction a bit. So I'm just going to uh, just quickly introduce uh, the other UI UX. Yeah, kick there. <laughs> Say hi. <laughs> yeah. All right. Then we have uh, the others, uh, Alim and Pearlie. All right. Okay. All right. So we'll move on. <laughs> so, okay. Okay. So, okay. Moving on to the serious details. All right. So for bootcamp batch five. Okay. The we're going to focus on uh, JavaScript. All right. And the bootcamp period will be from 19 October to 25th January. There'll be a two week <laughs> break. Uh, for you to go for your Christmas holidays, <laughs> right? All right. Okay. <laughs> all right. So you okay? So the commitment we are we are expecting is about fifteen hours a week. That means um, every Saturday uh, for about five hours, one to six p.m. Um, you will be guided by the coaches then, and then uh, throughout the rest of the week, you can take about ten plus hours at your own pace um, to uh, build the product and do your own self study as well. All right. Okay, so um, there'll be a participation fee of about 550, uh, of $550 sing dollars, all right? So, uh, so the fees will go back to fund the Tech Ladies events that we'll have throughout the year, all right? Uh, if you need full scholarship also, do let me or Elisha know, all right? Okay, so for the weekly bootcamp session, um, you will get to work with uh, the coaches to build the donor management application, all right? So you can choose to work on a front end or back end code, all right? And uh, pair programming means um, coach and participant. That's the pair programming, right? It's highly encouraged, right? And um, there'll be level up workshops, so regular coding workshops to help you build your foundations. All right. Okay. 
most important part, how to get into the boot camp. You need to, uh, okay, so you need to fill up an online application form, okay, which will be releasing uh, tomorrow, okay, tomorrow on Friday, right, and you will need to complete a technical task. And this is the timeline, all right. Um, uh, not to worry, we'll have all these details on the web page also on techladies.co, all right. So the timeline, all right. So today we have the info session, and tomorrow applications are open, and you can start preparing your technical tasks, um, which I think Michael will go through a bit uh, later, all right. And I know it might be a bit overwhelming, all right. Um, so we have three pre boot camps uh, from on thirty first August. 7th September and 14th September uh, to help you go through some of the basics like JavaScript, uh, ReactJS, so on. All right? And take note that, very important, applications close on 29th September. This is also when you need to submit your technical tasks. All right? And we'll try to finalize the participants by 11 October. All right? You might be caught up for interview as well, maybe to find out more info, information and also about the app you built. All right? And of course, then we'll kick off the bootcamp um, on 19 October all the way to January. And in February, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll successfully hand, hand off the product and training for the two non-profits. Right? And then we can party in February or March. All right? <laughs> okay, now, this is the part I have no idea what to talk about. So, handing over the bike. <laughs> Woo! All right, Woo! awesome. So um, for the technical task, so on top of filling up the application form, uh, we'd like you to also show us what you can do uh, in terms of coding and building something uh, to show us what you can do, like build, build a simple application, uh, show us what uh, you have learned and in, in the past and what your skill level is. Um, it's, so there are two tasks you can choose from. You can choose either one. You don't have to do both, just one that will do. Uh, one of the tasks is a very front-end focused. Basically, you'll be building a visual web, web, web application, uh, which hopefully you can use it. Uh, use React.js to build it. Uh, it has to be a dynamic website, so the, because we feel that the application we, that we're building for the NGOs will require us to do a lot of like backend calls, API calls, and all that stuff. So for this, we'd like you to also make uh, attempt to make an API call to some online service that will tell us some uh, some things that change over throughout the day. For example. Uh, in this case, we'd like you to call, uh, make a call to the a weather forecast API, which is provided by data.gov. So it changes every day and tells us tells you that the data, uh, weather forecast for the for the in the Singapore, which uh, and it has a two hour forecast and all that stuff. So it's up to your creativity to come up with some visual representation representation of that uh, a, that uh, information. So you can either put it in the Google Maps with some nice pictures, or just put it in a table form. You know, if it's as, it's as simple as that. And um, yeah, so we'd like you to also uh, show us, uh, tell us a bit more about yourself in the web page. So basically, build a web web application uh, website um, using React JS. You should ideally have uh, these three things, which is uh, a page that tells us more about you, a page that makes a call to the API and show us the data. Uh, that you have got collected from the data, the, the .gov uh, weather forecast, and as well as some navigation bar where you can see where you can navigate between the two. So very simple, right? Um, and we hope to, to uh, you can show us what you can do. They also, it, you will check out later, I'll show you a, a link to uh, a, a GitHub repo where you will also include some uh, things you can do, like to earn some brownie points, to basically show us, uh, like start showing off what you, what you have uh, learned in doing the workshop. Um, Right, so that's the front end focus one. And the back end focus one is a bit more of API. So basically, you'll be building a simple API uh, that will basically be uh, uh, that will be returning us a JSON uh, text file. Basically, tell us what is uh, the this. So the basically, uh, you build a JSON API that will show us the distance between travel uh, on a bus route between two bus stops. So we'll provide you with a, uh, with a JSON uh, database where you can use to which we can use to then compile and come up with a back end API. Then when basically well, I'll give you so basically the API should ideally take in um, the, the bus stop number uh, the bus stop code that I got on the bus on uh, the bus number I'm traveling in and the bus uh, the bus uh, bus stop code that you got off with how many of you have actually used uh, um, bus la or SG bus next bus uh, or bus lay <laughs> yeah okay so yeah so so you use something like that something similar to that we'll provide, we'll provide you the backend data to do to, to do all this 
And so basically show us what you can do. There are also some brownie points you can learn from doing this. Uh, so here you can link, you can download this. Uh, you could go to this web, uh, this GitHub repo, where it will show you more information about, uh, about that, right? So do the QR code here, or you can just take a snap picture of this. That's the URL at the bottom, which will provide you with more details about the technical task, okay? Right, so have you all got this? Great, awesome. So next up, uh, right. So uh, in order to help you uh, uh, pick up the skills needed to actually accomplish the technical task, uh, we're also going to be uh, doing some pre-bootcamp workshops. The pre-bootcamp workshop is open to everyone. So you can come, you can attend this and uh, we'll be basically in three workshops, we'll try to teach you the, the basics about building an application. So the first workshop will be on 31st of August, where we're teaching you a little bit about HTML and CSS. Uh, the second workshop on the 7th of September, we'll be talking about uh, building a basic web application uh, with JavaScript and Node.js, right? And then the third one, where we'll, we'll actually deep dive into React.js, which is a, a fr web front-end framework. Uh, we understand that there's also going to be some difficulties for, uh, for some of you to who might have, who need to install software. Because we do need you to install some uh, software development tools that will be used for building the application. So we will have an install fest where you would like you to come. You have problems, of course, uh, in the GitHub repo that you that you, you took a photo of uh, earlier. There's a link to the pre-regulated software that you need to install on your machine, uh, on your laptop, uh, in order to to come for to attend the workshops. Uh, if you have problems installing the software, do come for the uh, install fest, and we'll help you with the install installation of the software. Right, so the software should work on both on Windows and Macintoshes. So I encourage you to bring your laptop along with you uh, for this. Okay, and yeah, that's all I have. Yeah, so now we'll go on to Q and A. But before that, I uh, just want to do a quick shout out that uh, we are looking for venue sponsors. So a place like like, like this where food can easily cost us about three thousand dollars. So any big cast, okay? So we're still looking for a venue for the in-store fest, the first pre boot camp, the actual boot camp and code cleaning. So I am here. Please let me know. Also, we'll be sending the decks, the, the slides to you, so don't don't worry if you forgot to snap any photo, okay? Okay, now Q and A. Is everyone I stand? Whoa! So I tell more bad jokes. <laughs> I am going to tell. I'm going to run my. I'm going to tell more bad jokes. The one's going to ask questions. How many business? Oh, thanks. Good. You saved the So the question is about uh, whether there will be what percentage of uh, the bootcamp will be about uh, writing code and what, how many percentage of it will be about UX. So the, the way that we're organizing this is that the UX team and the product team will go uh, ahead of, 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 of you all and basically work with the NGOs and get work with the NGOs first to figure out what is the product requirement, uh, what are the screens like, what kind of UX they like to have for the, for the people who are using the application. So by the time the, the bootcamp actually starts, you will have a kind of like pretty much fully baked UX uh, uh, user journey. Basically the user stories and what kind of the, how the user journey will be like using the, that will be uh, for using the application. So the way you're coming in, you'll just be focusing on the technical implementation of the screens as well as the uh, user interfaces. Of course, there's also, uh, you can in, it in when you, as you're developing the application, you can also give feedback. Uh, the UX uh, and the product people will be around where you can give feedback to them about, hey, I think this screen, maybe we could, instead of doing it in one, in five pages, we can do it in one page. You know, so things like this you can suggest, right? And then, of course, we can make a, have a discussion and see and talk to the NGO and figure out whether that, is actually, whether that actually makes sense. Um, there's some flexibility there, um, but of course, uh, at the end of the day, we want to deliver something that works uh, and then, uh, for the NGOs, right? So. Yes, there will be some aspect of, uh, of UX that you will get to experience uh, during the bootcamp. Yep. Thank you. 
Yeah, you can also, so I'm holding my mic like a, rap, like a rapper because apparently it helps with the volume. So anyway, so the, you, if you look at the team slide again, it's a lot of people because some of them are actually leading the team. Like for example, Wei Man, she is the UI UX lead and we have Kate who is the UI UX uh, assistant. So Kate does not currently have any UI UX experience. So through contributing her skills, she will be shadowing Wei Man in order to fulfill the, the UI UX aspect of that. So we are also open to this kind of shadowing uh, stuff if you are curious to learn. All right, next question. Over there. So when it comes to the technical task, right? So I saw that the front end and the back end. Must I do both or do I choose one? Yeah, and also it has to be purely in JavaScript, right? So that I can do like. I can do like, for example, the, the, the front end task we better in uh, React.js and then the back end I do it in class or Django. Can I do that? Or it has to be in, like JavaScript like using Express. So uh, you are only required to do one oh. of the technical tasks. You want to do both? Sure, you can try. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to stop you. Um, we also want... Uh, uh, to consolidate on one uh, one programming language for uh, the product that we're building, because I think it's, it, there are just, there are some synergies in having the teams work together, uh, because both teams will co-located in the same uh, same premise as we are doing the bootcamp. So it's actually quite uh, it's much better if both teams are actually using the same language, and then the teams can also then share knowledge and help each other, encourage each other, and then we can also focus on uh, providing uh, level up workshops that could help you build up your fu your fundamentals. Uh, I think we want to focus on one language because I think in 12 weeks or 13 weeks to do this, uh, it quite, and it's a part-time thing. So I think if you will try to, you will try to squeeze like more than one language on you, it will probably be very taxing. So we want to just focus on one language uh, for both the front end and the back end. In this case, we're focusing on, on JavaScript, uh, which is JavaScript on the, on the front end and Node.js on the back end, which are still, it's still JavaScript, right? Okay. That's a very good question. So, uh, oh, okay, the question is about uh, what about the quality assurance as well as the maintenance of the project after the uh, product has been delivered. So, um, for the for quality assurance, we would also want to encourage candidates and, and participants to, to, to use TDD, uh, test driven development. So as we write the code, before we write the code, we actually write tests, right? So there'll be uh, unit tests, which are low level tests, and the integration tests, which will be more like browser, browser automation tests and all that stuff, to kind of like uh, <laughs> make sure that we're delivering a quality, uh, quality code. Uh, we also have some linters that we will implement to make sure that the coding quality is fine. And we also have uh, continuous integration that will be implemented to make sure that we're delivering uh, uh, code that is working before it's deployed to production. Uh, of course, for in terms of, of the continued uh, maintenance of the application, uh, the projects will be will be support an open source uh, repo. And, of, and anyone who has access uh, to, who knows how, to, who has an understanding of the code can continue to maintain it or help uh, make pull requests. And I think it's something we, will, we have not actually fully discussed with NGOs. It could also uh, end up having some of the candidates take up a maintenance contract even. I don't know. It's something that we could quickly discuss. Um, I, but then again, that's beyond the scope of, the, of this bootcamp. So the bootcamp is to build the application first. And what happens after that, we'll have to see how the, how, how the NGOs um, uh, feel about the application, whether it solves their, really solves their problem. Right? If it really does solve their problem, there could be an enhancement that we could do. But then again, that's outside the scope of the bootcamp. Question over here. Sure. Um, can I just ask if there's a cap on the number of people that you're going to take in for the camp itself? Right, the question is about the cap. Uh, uh, is there like an intake size? Right, the intake size, because we also have a limited number of uh, coaches, so what we're going to do is we're going to have three uh, participants per NGO. So basically a total of six participants. So that's, that's the cap that we have right now. Uh, I think it's because we also, we also have about six coaches. 
we also want to give each of the candidates uh, participants a quality enough quality time mm -hmm. that they can uh, that they can build and learn something uh, effectively. Mm. All right, last question, anyone? Last question. Okay. Then it's time. Oh, oh, this one. Why, why are you not going to uh, attend the sessions? Will it be video recorded? Will the <laughs> pre boot camp sessions be recorded? So if you are, okay, the question is about whether the pre boot camps will be recorded. The, the answer is yes. <laughs> and who's going to record it? Me. <laughs> Oh, my team, my team of volunteers. So we'll be recording all the pre-boot camps uh, sessions, and uh, you could then, uh, if you can, you cannot make it for the pre-boot camp sessions, you can basically watch the videos, uh, and the source code and the materials that we, we that we will be using for the pre-boot camp will also be made available. You will follow that link that we gave you earlier. I'll put I'll put all the links to all the materials uh, over there as well, including the slides and the sample codes. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Thank you, Michael. Next, I am going to talk to you about the inaugural mentorship program. Okay, so I need to get my duck with that. This is for recording. And no jokes. <laughs> Just killing time. Tell a joke, tell a joke. Okay, lapel. Lapel is louder. Okay, can you hear? Oh yeah, you can hear me. All right, so back to the really colorful slide here. As mentioned earlier, the boot camp is really for a woman who wants to invest a lot of time. So we are here to help all of you to get the education you need to enter the industry. But after you have all the technical skills, what's next? You got to find a job or actually use those skills that you learn in a very meaningful way. But how, you say, it's kind of like doing my own show now, but I hope all of you are entertained. It's kind of late, I know that. So, but how? Uh, <laughs> through mentorship, letting people who are already in the industry to help you, to give you the advice, the soft skills that are so important to helping you kickstart and grow your career. So, the Tech Ladies Mentorship is a three months program to provide you with the career guidance. So this is not technical, there's no coding involved. It's purely for soft skills, career guidance, and you will be paired individually with a mentor. So we want to keep it really, really personal. That's why we keep it uh, individually. Oh, thank you. So who is this for? So this is, this is for a woman with the skills, the technical skills, and they are ready to use their skills in, in their career. So these are people for existing technical skills, they're ready to apply for internship or jobs. So it's a very action-oriented mentorship. It's not like, eh, I feel bad, can you like, tell, give me some wisdom of the day? You know, that's not the program for you. This is more for people who really need the help to take action and enter the industry. So because we know that there are also people who just got in, especially if you don't have a strong technical background, you just got in the industry, it takes some time to really have, you know, have be stable in, the, in your career. That's why we are this mentorship program will also take, out, take junior developers, people with less than two years of relevant experience in their field. And uh, just because, uh, and just for, uh, we want to have a good match. We are narrowing down to software engineers, product managers, and UI UX slash web designers. Right. So again, this is very action oriented. Say it with me. Action oriented. Okay, that failed. Let's, let's cut that off. <laughs> right. So when you come in here, we, you will have a very clear goal of what you want to achieve. Like for example, in three months time, I want to have a job. In three months time, I will have gone to 20 coding interviews. In three months time, I'll have a reputation in the tech industry. That's something that what we want to have. So again, action oriented. So what is going to be again, one, one mentorship for three months. And over the three months, we'll like you to meet your mentor on a bi-weekly basis, because that's how you can give action item. Two weeks later, we'll see how, you're pro how you are progressing towards your goal. So these, these uh, meetings, it can take place in person or online because the mentors that we have so far, the mentors that we want are actually pretty um, experienced and ergo busy. But that's, kind of, that's great, that's the kind of people that we want. And part of the program, we would like the mentees to participate in a written interview for a Tech Ladies blog. 
of which I will then market the hell out of you. Um, so that is great because it helps you raise your profile. Uh, and of course, write a technical article or an article that showcases your expertise. Again, this helps you to kickstart your presence and your reputation in the in the industry. And it's very important in our industry. It's not a it's not about who you know, but who knows you. And the good thing is that a lot of medium are now like open to everyone, right? You can start your own blog. Uh, you can talk to Lee and she has her own blog as well. Like it's just tech ladies, but over there. Okay. And now the topics that we are focusing on, these are the three, again, because we want to make sure that there's a good match between the mentors and the people we're helping. So it's becoming job ready, uh, tech coding, uh, interview prep, charting your path in uh, your, your career path in the tech industry, and also building your network in tech. Now, um, as you remember, the bootcamp we charge for this mentorship program, we will charge as well. We don't, we don't do tech ladies for money. It doesn't pay us at all. In fact, we sometimes donate our own money. So, so that's why I, uh, but in order to help us not, get, not become actually broke. So that's why you know, if you can contribute with your money, contribute with your money. If you can't, contribute with your time. Uh, and sponsors like that can really, really help us to lighten the load. So, all of your funds actually go back to tech ladies. So the dinner you had, thank the woman who have been through the bootcamp. So the only sort of caveat the difference is that for the mentorship program, it's a fully refundable $200. Um, it's the first time we run a bootcamp, it's also fully refundable. So the first time we're doing mentorship program, it's fully refundable. It's refundable upon a contingent of you participating everything that you're supposed to, unless your mentor go missing, of which I'll rest in conversation with the mentor. <laughs> Speaking of mentors, okay, this this I actually need the I will need the script because so these are the three mentors. Um, me, <laughs> right? So we're um, we're definitely still looking for more mentors, and we're ho hopefully to have at least ten to twelve pairs at the end of the day. So um, these are the three confirmed mentors. First, all the way on the left is Melanie. Uh, she can help you with all topics and she has been a senior leader with over 20 years of experience in consulting, financial services and technology. And she currently manages the APEC for Facebook's business integrity team. So super awesome, super senior leader. She has mentored product managers, software engineers and UI UX designers so she can do everything. She's amazing. Then in the middle, we have our male ally, Andrew. Uh, who is currently the CTO of Straits Interactive and he actually has a chemistry degree uh, but he's a self-taught engineer and started a few startups of which one has now successfully exited so might be rich uh, <laughs> cut that part out over the recording yeah so he can also help you to, to figure out like what sort of tech stack you should you should be using, you know, what are some of the, the text the tools that people are hiring for, okay? And then that's me. So I am I am not not technical. Yeah, so I am not technical. Um, I'm the founder of Tech Ladies, and during the day, I am the developer programs manager for Facebook. So I like to say that I'm neither a developer nor a programmer, just a developer programs manager. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving on. So I'll I'll love to give back to to my community as well as a as a mentor. So the sort of niche that I can focus is really building your influence in tech because uh, it goes okay it goes sound a bit paisa as I brag about myself, but I am legit. So Elisha was featured on various media such as the Straits Time, Her World, E twenty seven, Business Times, and High Net Worth. She has also been invited by the government of New South Wales. Government of Thailand and Government of Malaysia to speak about entrepreneurship and community building. She <laughs> okay, okay la, I think one more sentence, but I think I'll save all of you. Or do, or do you want to hear it? She has spoken internationally. <laughs> As slush Singapore, I just Singapore. Eh. Google Woman Tech Makers Magic Academy Symposium, Rubikov, Malaysia, and PyCon Thailand, just to name a few. <laughs> okay, 
Anyway, I'm famous, hashtag. <laughs> Yeah, so I can help you be your influence in terms of like as someone who is currently not in the tech industry, what are some of the things that you can do to be a personal brand and how can you uh, really make an impact in that way, okay? Alright, important dates. Uh, tomorrow, there's a lot of um, things happening tomorrow because I'm currently swamped, so I'm like, oh, okay, I cannot finish the application, so like, it's tomorrow. <laughs> So right now we're actually doing it for the mentorship because we want to make sure there is a good match. We're actually doing it cyclically. So we have some mentors and we also have some potential mentees and based on the profile of the mentees we'll find the right kind of mentors. So on and so forth and hopefully don't drive myself crazy. But at about 12 September, which is my birthday, uh, we will close all the, all the application for mentors and mentees of which then we'll start interviewing like, who are the people we really want to invest in and help support the next three months. So thereafter, maybe end September, we'll have one speed networking event because sometimes um, you really got to like vibe with your mentor and mentee. So that's why I want to give people the opportunity to come and meet the mentors and the mentees and of which then we can see uh, what's there going to be, a, uh, who's going to match with who. So it's, it's almost like a... Um, it, it's like it's like Tinder la. It's like Tinder for networking la, Okay, so you have to like your mentor to swipe you. You also to swipe your mentor la, Then match la, Then okay, ah, okay. Um, and then once that all that like matching is done, the tindering is done, then we will have a mentorship kickoff where everybody will meet your mentor um, again in person and have a chat and a nice networking. Uh, if you have money, you can buy wine. If not, then we'll buy root beer. <laughs> Then early October, we will have the actual, well, that's when we will kick off the, the mentorship. And then it's on, the mentor, it's on the mentees who will proactively reach out to your mentor and say, hey, uh, let's catch up on this date, this date, and this is the things that I want to talk about. Again, action oriented. And then mid November, we probably want to do like a networking session where everybody meets. And I um, think by January, we can also hop back with the graduates of the bootcamp session to have like a, a mega party. Okay, if you want more information, um, go to this group, I'll also send it to you. This, this will bring you to our Facebook group, which is usually the first place that I post um, anything because mailing lists take some time to write, so Facebook's faster. Okay, any questions about the mentorship program? Is it, is it good or bad when there's like no questions? Okay, I'll come and you later, okay? It seems like it's an either the boot camp or the mentorship. Yeah. yeah. So you can't do both mm. at the same time. Yeah. yeah, so the question is, seems like it's either boot camp or mentorship, uh, which is absolutely correct. It's designed it that way because the boot camp and the mentorship are designed to serve women in different phases of their uh, journey into tech. So for the bootcamp, uh, typically people who have very minimal programming skills and want to really have this intensive uh, program that help them learn technical skills and create real products. But for the mentorship, we are expecting people to already have these technical skills that, that, uh, that you would have learned in a bootcamp. And, and the mentorship will, helps you, will help you to give you the soft skills that you need in order to successfully enter the industry. So like a finishing touch uh, to the bootcamp. So in that way, we cover the entire journey uh, for women who wants to enter the industry. Hmm. Your question. Do you want to speak uh, to the mic? Okay. Oh, okay. That. Um, anyone else? Any other questions? No? Okay, so we can actually end on time. Woo! Oh, 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 sorry, sorry. Go, go for it, go for it. All questions are good. So, if I don't know where am I, can I just apply for both and where? Uh, <laughs> I, li I really like your attitude. She was like, um, do I need to do front end and back end? Maybe can I do both? And now it's like, can I work both bootcamp and mentorship? The answer is yes, do it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you, you, seem, you seem to have a little bit of technical skills and if you feel like you're ready you know, to go for, uh, to go for the really enter the industry, get a job there, why not? I mean, just fill the application form. It's free to apply. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, go for it. Ah, yes. 
So, oh, okay, that's a good question. So, actually, for the again, in terms of the mentor and mentee selection, is on an iterative basis. It's based on like what what kind of mentees who are interested in this program. Then I'll actually go and source for the mentors who would who would uh, be able to support this woman. So, for now, in because I want to. Uh, have more streamlined, so it's easier to find the right kind of mentors. That's why I only uh, keep it to product managers, software engineers, and web designers. Having said that, I know that data science is is really hard. In fact, I have one of my data scientist colleague at Facebook who was interested to participate as a mentor, and I told her the same thing. It depends on what type of mentees, and then then I will be able to see if I can uh, have you involved in this in this um, program. So TLDR, apply first, lah. Then we we'll see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, don't back, don't know. Ah, uh, waiting. You want to be mentor? <laughs> I am negative mentor. They say everything I do, then don't do, then camera, camera. Oh, okay lah, okay lah. Okay, any other questions? If not, I am here, obviously, or, or you can just email me. I'll probably send all of you the decks that, that we use today as well. Okay, moving swiftly on. And we have come to the end of the Tech Ladies Info Session Bootcamp 5 and Mentorship. Can I have a round of applause, please? <laughs> Woo! For more information, join, uh, go to this URL, you join the Facebook group, please. Join Facebook group, it's free, and more people use Facebook, the more like, I get salary. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so the study group and the meetups usually will post a, a event on the Facebook group and for any updates on the book and mentorship, we'll go to our Facebook group first. So, mm. so do join us. Um, if not, uh, yeah, then we have to email you, lah, but can, can also, can. <laughs> ah, and uh, last thing, shout out, shout out. We are always looking for volunteers and sponsors, especially venue, because renting a co-working space for the time that we want can set us easily $2,000 per event. So please, where's Sarah? Okay, so, so the Microsoft um, host is already gone. If not, we can trap her in until she like hosts more stuff. <laughs> Just kidding, she has been super, super helpful. So yeah, we are always looking for coaches and mentors, both technical and non-technical, as well as people to help with partner. Partnerships is sponsorship. So please help us get more money, more resources. Uh, also help us to engage with the community and marketing, etc. Sponsors, give me cash. <laughs> <laughs> TLDR, huh? Okay. That's all. So we'd we'll love to have all of you to do us a favor because we are always improving ourselves to see like what are some things that resonates with you, what are some things that don't resonate with you. Are the jokes funny or maybe like stop telling jokes? <laughs> <laughs> so please take a photo of this uh, QR code. It's just a very, very, very short uh, survey. Yeah, and that's all. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope it's super, super helpful for you. Okay, so we have this place until about 9.30 thereabouts, so please feel free to mingle, you know, ask questions. All of us who are wearing a Tech Ladies t-shirt are part of the team, some of the coaches are also out here on the front. So please, thank you so much for joining us. Good night.